and I'm now live and it's another any reseller questions and we've got our guests in waiting for your questions we've got John Luke the reseller white boy we'll get all this pointing right we've got Jack and Emily the global thrifters <laughs> hey, right. and we've got Nick how you doing Nick you're right very well yes yeah I'm good Oh. Um, right. So I don't know when the questions are going to come in. Like I say, we set this up originally to sort of focus on any questions within the chat. But to, to sort of get one going, I've got a few questions. I've got a few backup questions. <laughs> so um, I've been recently going to Boot Fair down the A3, which is quite a distance from me. And I've met a lot of people from Portsmouth, which is where Jack and Emily are from. And I was quite surprised that you come up that far. And I was quite surprised to myself that I'm going down that far. <laughs> so uh, what's the furthest you would travel to a boot fair? So Jack and Emily, what would you say? Would it be the A3? Before lockdown, yeah. we'd never been, to, yeah, never been to the A3 one. It's maybe like 20 miles sort of. Yeah, yeah, sort before. of around, mm. yeah, around the ports of area. But, but after lockdown, there wasn't, there wasn't many open. No. So we had to look further afield. Um, There's only a midweek one, which is a Wednesday, which yeah, we go Wednesday to. Today, but that is close to us, the rest are no, yeah. not and A lot of people so. that we knew were going to the A3 one, so we thought, yeah, we'll head that a little bit further. And it, it's paid off. It's been yeah, good for it's us. Really good there, so. It's a massive one, is it? I mean, yeah. I, I, I'd spoke to some people who, who were from Portsmouth, and they sort of said there's nothing really in the Portsmouth area, and you do have to travel. But I mean, is that true, or do you, do you Let, find local? In the summer, there's uh, South Sea, which is our like our local one, and it is it does us well. It's good, but it's not all year round. So Gosport's probably then closest after that. Um, yeah. But people go to Ford and and yeah. a few around. So it's in true. terms of, sort of mileage, what you was you know would you say about 40, 50 miles is your max? For, you? for the, yeah, yeah, that's as far as we've been so far. But never say never. <laughs> Well, I, I hear of ones like around, all around the M25 and sort of like North East London. Oh, so I can't be doing that. Yeah, no way. What about you, John? Do you sort of travel that far? For? Before lockdown, I'd never really go that far. It was Bowley is my near one. Uh, it's literally five minutes. It's like a 20 minute walk. I used to get the bike. I go on the bike there. I used to have shopping bags on the way back on the bike uh, a few years ago. But yeah, during lockdown, I went to Leeds, which is quite far for me, about an hour's drive. Um, yeah. And uh, Norcross as well, the one that Zaheer goes to. Been there a couple of times as well. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, I've, I've started going East Lanks. That's just started again. That, that's about twenty minutes away. So that's that's nice for me. That cool. What about you, Nick? I mean, do you um, are you desperate for stock and will travel? Or? <laughs> um, we're quite lucky where we are. There's there's one in our town which is a minute's drive. There's another one in a village which is about five minutes. Um, but we do travel. Um, well, we went to East London, straight North London, which was about forty-five minute drive to that jumble trail thing. Yeah, I, I'm um, surprised you went there. That's, I mean, I was just thinking, God, I could have gone to that, and it's probably about mm. the same distance. It's, yeah, um, it's quite a direct route, really, A1M, and then straight through. And the thing with that is, that's a fun day out. You see, so you get the fun day out element of it, wandering around a jumble trail as well. Mm. Um, but we do travel about forty minutes to a couple of boot sales because they're something a bit different. We go yeah. to one over in Redbourne, which is about forty minutes from here. I don't um, like going over an hour really, because when you think if it's an hour there and an hour back, that's two hours sort of just driving. And if it's if you get up in, I've done that and it's not been that good. And you sort of go, God Almighty, what a waste yeah. of time that was. But so I've do... travelled I've travelled a lot, lot further for halls. Um, yes. the private halls. I've yeah. been to Dudley for a hall. I've been pretty much all over the country for single big halls, like higher van style halls. Um yeah. because when you're picking up ten grand's worth of stock, you 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 know, you go to Scotland. You're gonna you? go for it. It's yeah. not a problem. So that's a different that's a different ball game with, with a boot sale it's still a lottery you could drive an hour and find nothing yeah and then exactly. have to drive an hour home so yeah yeah it's demoralizing yeah, you... it's demoralizing if you drive the hour and then you come back with an empty boot there's not there's not the worst of feelings but it's quite a bad feeling yeah but, well, the, the only thing you can do is go out and do it again oh because, again yeah you know there's no point staying at home is there you know you're not going to get anything there I don't think I've ever come back from a car boot without buying a single item. It's always something. You're always it's always something. <laughs> well, well, I can you walk around. Yourself. You almost force yourself to buy something when it's really bad. Like, I'm going to buy something, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you panic buy and end up with something you regret. Yeah. 
definitely, definitely. Well, not right, long ago, we, we went to the, sorry, uh, not long ago, we went to the 40 minute away uh, one, which is Redbourne, and uh, it started raining. And it was just, that was so demoralizing because everyone was packing up, everything was, it was a proper full on rainstorm and everything was getting ruined and people were just driving off. And it's like, we've just driven 40 minutes for this. Yeah. So we stood under a tree and luckily it blew over and we managed to get a few bits, a few nice bits as well, because all of the dealers had run. Um, <laughs> yeah, dealers was, was packing away as well. Yeah, it was demoralizing though. Uh, right, Carter's Oven and Carpet Cleaners, which is a new name on me, has got a question. Um, it says, if you source predominantly from car boot fairs, so in the summer, what do you do? What do you guys do in the winter when they are closed? Um, now, I have been reselling for you know full time for about four years, and I hadn't quite got this right in the winter period because uh, I was always scrabbling around, you know, for stock. Come sort of like February time, right? Um, so what I do is try and source even more during the summer. It really is make hay while, while the sun shines. And then when the boot fairs are closed, my main charity shops are no good around me, really. They're just um, too highly priced. I, I will look if I'm there, but I tend to do jumble sales and I'll focus in, in on the jumble sales. So that's how I, I deal with that. Um, what about you, John? Would you... Uh... Um probably the same really charity shops they're quite good up here there's quite a lot um but it's just learning which towns to avoid and which towns to go to and it's all going there on the right day you could go to a charity shop for example yesterday i was doing some training for work at a town about 10 minutes away popped in the charity shop there's nothing there and then i did a full walk around the town today and in the same charity shop i picked up 26 ps2 games at 30p each and they weren't there yesterday so it's yeah. just it's day by day and you know it's hard to judge yeah, the more often you go, the the more likely you are to be lucky, isn't it? Yeah. It's always yeah. always the way. So, um, I mean, I last year I travelled. Talking about travelling, I, I think I travelled forty miles to check out the charity shops, kind of on the way halfway to Brighton around the Crawley area, because I thought that's a good area. And I ended up getting two things, and I thought, well, I'm I'm not going to do that again. I'll just stick to my local couple of honey holes that I know and my mm. local ones that are just near my dro post drop off. But it is. That, so. Charity shopping, it, it's its like buying a lottery ticket. It's totally like, like John Luke said. You can walk in a shop and find nothing and think, I'm never coming back here. But if you force yourself to go back there, you might find that mother load of PS2 games that you mentioned yeah, or whatever yeah. it is. It's all timing. Yeah, if you went to the same shop uh, Monday to Friday, say it was your local, you'd find something new every day. And it, you know, if you didn't go, you wouldn't have got it. But it's a lot of time going back and forth as well. Yeah. You've got to kind of work out what's, what it's worth. Hmm. what about you jack and emily how, how do you sort of deal with stuff in the winter so we go to, we go to household auctions um yeah. and sort of source sort that way don't we but yeah. predominantly in the winter because obviously we can get out in the summer to yeah. boot sales we have, we have a couple of all year rounds the gospel mm. for example is an all year round so, um they do outdoor and indoors so even pouring down the rain you'll get the house clearance guys or whoever who need to clear the stuff still so yeah. we can still buy in the winter um but again, you know, you're, we're putting stuff away for Christmas or for the winter yeah. that you're buying in the summer that you think will sell better in Q4 or, or whenever. Um, it, it's funny when it comes around to sort of Easter time, you're so desperate to get to a car boot because you haven't had one <laughs> for like, like four or five months. It's great. First one back, you're, you're buying more stuff that you thought, oh, yeah, like I wouldn't first, buy this normally. Like the first one after lockdown, we went crazy because I think it was like, ah, yeah, yeah, buy again. Yeah, after lockdown, I was like, <laughs> Buying. <laughs> and, and i kind of think there's there's kind of a period where there's really good stuff at the start and then towards the end of the season it's kind of like oh it's not as good as it was but then you also get the period where there's good weather and you get families coming along and that's a good time to go to a car boot but uh no it's difficult in the winter what do you do in the winter nick do you kind of just go with what you've got in well, the plow through the backlog we, we've yeah. always we've always <laughs> operated that we buy it, buy it when we see it, and if that means we we build up a huge backlog, so be it. As as we tend to do, and then like with lockdown, that that paid off in you know dividends because we had endless stuff to. I went sourcing in my loft you know, on a weekly basis, yeah, and um, but that's how we've always operated since since the early days. We would we would you know make hay when the sun shines and just stockpile it, and then in the winter when you can't source as much. Although we do source in the winter, we we do do a bit more charity shopping in the winter, uh, but it's super hit and miss as, as we've just all said. Um, but also auctions, which we don't do as much these days. But that's an option that's always there for us. We can travel to auctions if we need to. 
We used yeah. to do a lot more of that. I've kind of got out of the habit, really. Yeah, I wish I did more auctions. I sort of have looked at a few online auctions um, and, you know, track the prices, but the prices seem to go higher. So I think it depends, you know, what local ones you have near you and whether they're good. I know uh, Derek Tap Peddler um, sources from auctions quite a lot, and it's it's really interesting sort of stuff he gets. So that's, that's a good... Uh, one to look at um mw is saying if you run a sale in your store do you still leave the option for best offer on um and i do because i'll always consider a price um no matter what it is because it might be for something i really want to get rid of um nick do you leave it on or um it's a good question i think so. I, don't remember, I don't remember switching it off <laughs> um so yes i think <laughs> it's too much bother to switch it off i think so do you we leave do. it on jack and emily or um yeah so we don't we haven't nobody sent um we send offers out but we haven't put many sales on um we find ourselves um sending offers out quite often um you know when you get your watches or, or anything um yeah yeah but we haven't really dabbled much into putting sales on the shop yet but it's something we're, we're looking to do it do you guys get a lot of much um sales from the sale i'm i agree with what you're saying i think that the sending best offers is, is a way more efficient way of generating mm -hmm. sales um andrew has dabbled much more in there using the sale option right. um but it's never bought in a lot of lot of uh, actual revenue whereas sending offers and receiving offers is the the single best thing ebay has ever implemented I in, agree. in my <laughs> opinion um, and i think whoever asked the question dabble with best offer rather than sale and see if you get more results because it works it it's really more does. direct yeah it's more direct and also when I send a little message, I say, I've, hi, I, thanks for your interest in this item or whatever. I sent you this limited time offer. <laughs> and that, that element of it. Yeah. Well, we're all the same. You know, if you've got 24 hours or whatever it is to accept or not, it puts it at the front of your mind and, and, it, and it works. It's psychological, but yeah, it works. And also, I mean, it, it's going to the people who are watching your items. So like a sale could be on an item that no one's watching and you're kind of thinking, oh, God, I've got it in a 20% sale and it still hasn't shifted. Mm. But all of those send offers, because it's send offers to watchers, you know, there's all they've already shown an interest. So, mm. yeah, you're right. Um, do you do that, John? Do you do... Uh, um, I, remember, I remember seeing your sale um, and then I tried to sale myself. I never really... Um, I only put best offer on high-end mm. items where I, do, you know, really don't know the value but most of the time sending offers as well. Um, but yeah, that's just the kind of business plan I have. I just don't have best offers on. I used to do it, but I have just have it on the high-end niche items, really, not, yeah. not every item. AA is asking, do you feel that eBay sales, and I don't think he means the sort of promotional sales, I think he means generally um, sales through eBay have become a lot more inconsistent than in previous years. So it's the old question of, is, is eBay not pushing your items is it not as good as it used to be so i mean nick you've been doing ebay for a long time do you think it's any different in terms of more difficult to to get the value in sales that you could have got I, five years ago or? i don't know so much about that but i tell you the one massive glaring difference is returns the the amount of returns we get now is crazy massive compared to what it was like in the early days and that's ebay pushing it as free and quick and easy returns buy on our platform you can return it whatever you like for whatever reason they're trying to be amazon and it's it's a pain in the backside and we we've seen and just this year we've seen the rate of return shoot up so that well, re difference. yeah returns i mean i don't do so much clothing as i used to but the returns in clothing i mean how how people uh, can deal with that because it is obvious that people are, are, are wearing it and returning it and taking the mix so it's One use. <laughs> well yeah exactly i mean you, you have to deal with it but you kind of think well it's, it doesn't seem fair that you have to do that what about you i mean do you, do you oh no you how long have you been reselling jack and emily it's about three years is it two three years so, so full time uh two years, two years together um before we went yeah. traveling i was doing it part-time and then when yeah. we come back traveling, we both started. Like quite yeah, I've been doing it quite a while, but um, it's more each year. You know what I mean? It's, it's um, yeah. 
lockdown's been for sales wise um this 2020 has been a strange year yeah. I, I think that's an odd one for the books um well, it's, it's difficult isn't it with lockdown because sales yeah. just went through yeah. through lockdown through we, as nick yeah. said um he had a backlog same for us so people asked us like how are you um how are you sourcing through lockdown we're like we're not we have yeah. we have got so much stuff to clear and our, our and 90 was, day total you see on like your ebay app and that that yeah. was through the roof through it the took roof. a pandemic for us to sort it out yeah it took a pandemic for us to sort out the back <laughs> it, it was the same with me i had i had loads of lego that i had to sort out and I, you know it just been sitting in in the shed for a couple of years and i've just had a sale today for like 220 quid and it's it's stuff i sorted through lockdown <laughs> And, I still can't you know, believe how long you set on that Lego for. That's just money. That's oh, money in your pocket. Like you don't know, doing the same, to be honest. <laughs> you don't know how much there was. Honestly, it was three, three big cars worth. And wow. there's me trying to complete every kit. <laughs> yeah, I'm selling a load of Lego as well at the minute. Um, it's, it's just daunting to look at, but once you get into it, you crack it open. You know, you'll see yeah. the benefits. It's good. And and one thing I I you know learned about Lego is yeah it's worth spending a little bit of time on it but if you've got a kit and it's sort of 95 percent complete Love sell it. it at that because we i think we're quite lazy else. sorry i think we're quite lazy when it comes to lego because we don't build them uh we literally no we, we we photograph them and say that this is how it's found you can see from the photos blah 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 um we don't have the time or thing to build it and to be honest we still sell it it still sells we may yeah. get a couple of pound less than a complete one the guaranteed complete but the hours you spent building, or in my case, it would be, I'm throwing it across the room. But, um, and I think you're right to do that with most Lego. We're, we're big, big vintage, sets different, obviously. Yeah, vintage space stuff, it's well worth the time building up so you can show it and say this is complete or 95% complete. Stuff like Jurassic Park and, and other some other things that have, you know, the the follow, you can get a super premium for a complete set. The rest of it, it doesn't really matter. They're almost buying it by the weight anyway. So, yeah, yeah, I think you're right to do that. Uh, Mr. Blobby, he's, uh, I think he's simply reselling now. He's, um, he says, what are your thoughts on Facebook Marketplace for buying and sourcing? Um, I don't do a great deal with that, but I started doing a bit more during lockdown. My, my frustration used to be with it that I seem to go on it and see the same items all the time. And... I think what I've learned is it's a bit like charity shops that you've got to do it, look at it little and often. There's no point sort of saying I'm going to spend three hours looking at Facebook Marketplace, trawling through all of those kind of sales posts that are on there. It's like look look every, you know, maybe, I don't know, six times a day and, and never expect to see anything. And then occasionally you will. Um, but, I mean, I found a, a GameCube on there was, that was free. I got on a tari that was about 20 quid and sort of loads of cartridges with it so um from someone who, who never used to use it I, i've been quite impressed with it i haven't sold on it so that's something i i do want to do is sell on it because you know you wouldn't be being charged fees on that but um john do you use facebook marketplace a lot or over the uh the lockdown yeah i've, I've got quite a few gaming bundles from there a few different toy bundles and stuff like that um, yeah. But like you say, it's like charity shops. It's very hit and miss. Um, I think if you're not there in the first 10 minutes, it's gone. And even if you do reply in like five minutes, it still might be gone. So it's really demoralizing as well because you think, wow, that's such a great bundle. You know, is this still available? All that malarkey, And then it's gone. And you think, oh, what, what crazy. was <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy how quick it can go. And you kind of get that feeling that I'm just surrounded by resellers here. <laughs> You, yeah, know, you, get that, you know, in the charity shop, like all these people are resellers. Shop do you use it, uh, Jack and Emily? Do you use Facebook Marketplace? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, we do actually use it to sell as well. Things that don't go as well on eBay or it's not worth it. So we sold a shell casing on there. I listed it. It got taken down, obviously. Yeah, so, like, trench chart shell casing. They took oh, it down. Nice. So, yeah, we sold that on there, and then he came and got it for twenty five pounds, and what, we said what we was asking for. Yeah, online. and, and then, we had another one, and so he went. Bought yeah. both for fifty quid, no fees, oh, nothing. Nice. Yeah, you know, yeah, we do sometimes use it to um mm. to buy, but we sourced a we we, we found a, a rally chopper bike for it was in the scrap metal on Facebook Marketplace uh, for free. I saw yeah, it. And, and we got two for two fifty for yeah. it. So I yeah. oh, used one of those. Got it for free. Oh, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. was, it, was it, it? They did a yellow one and they did an orange one. I think this was a, a blue this and was, hot pink one. Was it? Yeah, it was, hot pink. A, it was like a rare, a rare one. Color. I think so. that's why it got the maybe got the yeah. money. But 
Wow. I think mine was red, actually. Mine was mm -hmm. red with yellow chocolate. Yeah. Lighting. And it had yeah. three, three gears. Oh, the gear yeah. ones, they're, they're, the, they're the ones you're after now. This one didn't yeah. have that. It was, like, it was a Mark Three, but the, the early ones. Oh, it's right. Good, good money. I had now. the gears thick in the middle, so if you, yeah. if you got it hard and slid off the side, <laughs> it got I've seen them enough. up to like 700 or so now in good condition. Yeah. The gears. I, so, I threw mine on a bonfire in about wow. 1985. <laughs> <laughs> where's that where's that bonfire the, the rust would be worth money <laughs> crazy things you do mm. um mary marilyn ness says how often do you counter offer so i suppose that's when you get an offer in hmm. i do if if i get an offer that is ridiculous i will just decline it so if i've got something up for 20 quid and they've offered three or four <laughs> i'm just like don't waste my time yeah. no um but i would say if it's sort of 50 percent of the value of the item i'd counter but um do you count yeah, you, much, you want to Jack? meet them in the middle yeah I agree with john yeah if, if they've got 50 percent, we might go 75 percent. as long as there's a profit we, we do strongly always say quite often that if we can turn it quickly for a profit to buy more yeah happily to yeah. the quicker we move it the better it's about the selling, isn't it? And you can't forget that. Even though you might have a value in your head, you've got yeah, to think, yeah. well, I might not be realistic with that. Yeah, it totally depends on the item with me. Yeah. yeah. It depends what the margin is, obviously, how I feel about the item. Am I sick of looking at it? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you think, oh, if I counter, they might just vanish off the face of the earth and never mm -hmm. speak to me again. So and I really want to get rid of this. So I'll take, I'll take, you know. 50% off on some things because you just want, want it gone. But yeah, yeah I, I, I've had that a few times where I've counted and I it. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. why aren't they oh, talking to me anymore? I wanted an extra pound. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah. Zaheer always laughs at me at that because he's very much, you know, of the mind to get it sold. And, you know, if he's got something for 20, he might sell it for 12. And I'm like, oh, I should be getting 15 at least. And, you know, so he, it's it's been too tight, really. That's that's my trouble. So, but there you go. Do you counter much, John, or do you sort of like? Uh... Well, I don't have offers on most things, but yeah, I will I will counter sometimes. But sometimes, if you've been looking at the item for a good few months, you just want rid. Um, yeah. It but depends on the item, like Nick says. You know, yeah. if you've got a little bit of passion about the item, I'll I'll look at that for an extra week or two, and it probably go for the value. Yeah, I mean, rare. I've had a few sort of rare items which you'd never see on eBay, and I, I will hold out longer for those definitely. But um, if if it's like I don't know, a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle, or something, it's like yeah, whatever, get rid of it. Yeah, there's nothing more satisfying though when you get an offer in and they they, they put little comments saying, "Oh, this is all it's worth, really." Blah 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 blah, and they give you the whole. You won't sell it for this anyway, will you? And you just yeah. decline it, and then it sells for the full price. There's nothing better than that feeling. Yeah, you, that day, yeah. you, feel like, you feel like you want to go back and message that person. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I've had I've had ones that start off with a message. I don't intend to buy this item, but did you know that? Da, 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 da. Oh, like, the worst. Don't waste you your get, time. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are, there, are there people who just go through eBay looking at items so they, they can yeah. sort of like write messages to the sellers? There's a gem that goes around all of YouTube resellers and it'll message saying, this is £5 in CEX. You'll never get this, <laughs> this price. But I think everyone who I know has had a message off this same guy. And I had one the other week. It was about the Little Britons when obviously they shut up in price. He was like, that's 75p in CEX. <laughs> yes, mate. But I'll go up, you know, back from CEX. You don't get a picture on CEX. You don't know what you're buying, really. You offer a different service. Mm. I think uh, if he said that to me, I'd say, yes, I know. I've bought them all off CEX. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, get alive. Leave me alone. God, yeah. That was crazy, though, the, the, um, yeah. the Little Britain thing. I. We, we got wind of it. We were heading to a boot sale and I found a set almost instantly uh, of one, two, three and the specials or whatever. And I got 50 quid the next day for them. You picked up one, didn't you, John? I, I was catching up on your video. You picked up a box set, didn't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the original. <laughs> it was at the boot sale on Sunday. It was the Little Britain Radio. It was like in a collector's tin, one of 8,000. Um, it's not worth it a great much i think it was like the 2000 in the run uh it's about 20 pound value but who knows in the future might be a little yeah. bit rarer um abby is asking about high-end prices uh how do you decide on a price for high-end items with little info on them 
Uh, she recently picked up a Pioneer tape deck, but with so few around, not sure how to price it. Um, I recently sold my highest value item, which was like a CB radio. And I found out what the new price was, which was 250 quid. And I had no idea what to price it at. So I just stuck another hundred on. So I price it high. I would say if you can't find the exact one on eBay, try and find a similar one. Um, you know, a pioneer tape deck, uh, similar name, but, um, yeah, price it high if you don't know. Um, Nick, would you go along with that? Yeah, I concur with pretty much all of what you said there. I think you're not going to find the exact same item you've got on eBay every time. Um, the therapy, uh, search does help if you can do that and send it back for the whole year. Mm -hmm. That helped me out a couple of times recently. If you've got that option, I think you only have that if you've got one of the shop tier. I don't know. Yeah, I have that on the basic shop. You have that on the basic yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so if you've got a shop, you can use the Terapeak research, which allows you to extend that search time for completed items right back to a year. That helps. Very but then what Peter said is right, find something that's as near as you can get and then add a chunk on because you can come down. You can never go back up once you sold it. Uh, if in doubt, go high is what I'd say and put offers on. For sure. Always aim high with them. Um, you can never go back, like you say, if you sell it for two, you know, two less, um, you lose out. And you'll get an idea on the number of watches you have and you know, the number of views that your item gets, whether it's getting that interest. And if, if it's got no views, no watches, then it'll bring the price down relatively quickly. But if it gets a lot of offers or, or a lot of watches maybe put the price up so you know <laughs> just quickly before i forget the other option is if, if you're really not sure but you think maybe i don't know 200 pounds is about right start it there on auction is another the, thing that was our that's where we were heading that's yeah, what, okay. that was, <laughs> yeah we we will Sorry. no 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 not at all um so we if like you guys all said if you have an idea of the price we will put a a, a buy now of maybe just higher and you can always come down yeah. but we will stick we will stick to that if you can put an auction on it and you're happy to get one bid and whatever and any more is a bonus yeah that minimum auction start price you're happy with you made a profit if you're not sure of the price you, like you said 200 pound but you might go for 300 happy yeah. days but if you're happy with the 200 if you're disappointed with the 200 don't it's start it at 200. yeah, yeah. you know what i mean because i don't yeah, like yeah. reserves i've n never put a reserve on stuff personally and, and never do what I did with that Atari cartridge and put, actually put a buy it now on. I'm Luckily, I took it off and then it went up to five grand. But that hit wow. me how to buy it. And I didn't know what it was, but I, all the research came back nothing because it was a one off. And I nearly lost, you know, five what? grand on an item. So, so that, I'm, 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 what was that? Sorry. I'm well, that's, that's Nick's highest value. Oh, okay. Highest. Awesome. Yeah. Well, apart from what was it? You sold a, a van or a car? Oh, I, sold, I sold my own <laughs> camper van for like eight grand, but that was different. That don't count. That doesn't count. <laughs> no, that's what I paid for it. Um, <laughs> no, it was an Atari cartridge, but it was it was a prototype. It had a handwritten oh, label on it. It never been publicly released, um, and I. In the end, once I'd taken the buy it now off because I was tipped off, it was something a bit unusual. Uh, it went for I think it was five thousand two hundred. What was That's the buy it now? I, I had a buy it now of a hundred pounds on it initially. Oh. You're so lucky though, because I remember wasn't it someone who messaged you through eBay saying mm -hmm. you should check this out and why they well, did just click buy it now? No, no, it's a guy who owns an Atari forum and he said, "Can I use your pictures on my website? Because this has never oh, been yeah. seen before." That's and right. I was like, what do you mean it's never been quick? Take the bike now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in that instance, what made you think £100? Was that something? Because if you didn't find similar, was it just an idea? Or I did every search I possibly could, and it didn't come up as it, it had it written on it, hard head by Activision, whatever, and some random date. And I thought that game doesn't exist, It whatever, whatever. Uh, I just thought. I don't know. I just pl plucked a figure out of the air. Yeah. But one you'd be yeah. happy with. <laughs> yeah, I paid a pound for the damn thing. I didn't care at that point. Wow. Um, Found into 100. Happy with that. Yeah, so <laughs> the, mo the, moral Sorry, is, <laughs> the moral is if you don't know, don't put a fight now on it. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that's in a cool collection now. I bet that's in mm. cool yeah. Atari museum. Yeah, it, it was a collector in Poland. Um, yeah, he was thrilled to bits with it. He messaged me after he got it. I was hoping he was going to make a video and say, I've got it, I love it, blah, blah, blah. But he works for the government. He's not allowed to be on social media. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> That's yeah. weird. I mean, you, you'd have never picked that price out of the air, would you? Like, oh, well, I'll pick a price to, you know, a high price. Let's try five grand. I mean, it's just not important. <laughs> No. So, uh, Jack and Emily, I know you had a you've had a high value one recently. Yeah, I, I was thinking, God, that almost challenges Nick's. Like, oh, well, we're, we're, we're four grand, almost four grand off. But, <laughs> but, not bad, but, though. No, it's not. And we paid close to what you said. Yeah, we paid one pound sixty six. So three items for a fiver. I bid him. He had, he had two pound each on him. I bid him for a fiver. And it was didn't a, know the time I didn't know his value. Yeah. No, no. Um, it was a back in twenty seventeen. It was a uh, fly fishing reel. Um, by Edward von Hoff, uh, 1896 in Brooklyn, New York, and it went for 1,200 to a guy in Sweden who actually PayPal friends and family PayPaled me it um, just oh. away outside of eBay. He went, "Don't worry about eBay." And I was like, yeah. "Are you sure?" You had to send it. <laughs> you had to send it somewhere. He, he said, "Can you send it to?" Yeah. He was in Norway, or was it in Sweden? He said, "Can you send it to a guy to clean it?" Um, and then he'll send it to me. He doesn't serious. want to see it dirty. Yeah. I mean, I mean, weren't you at all worried when all of that was going on? Okay, so you want me to send it to someone else who then has to get it to you. Mm. But it was friends and family. He had... Oh, he's friends put, and family. Yeah, he, no, yeah. He, he messed me up. You had saying, them on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had it, yeah, yeah. It's madness. But, I mean, how do, how do you... I mean that that well, how do you go about posting that? Did you just send it tracked? I, I just or? yeah, special delivery. He actually um he yeah paid. He sent like I was an extra hundred pound for posters actually cover it. Uh, yeah. And I was honest, it, it, he had like I think like twenty pound left over. And I sent that back to him. I was like, I was like, it was only cost eighty. You can have have that back. Like you've <laughs> spent enough. Like and he was really grateful. I always think a worst case scenario on these things like, OK, well, if, if I had that Atari car or if I had that a fishing reel and I put it in a box. Take it yourself. And even <laughs> if, you know, it well, it, yeah, yeah what, going back to the Atari. If, what sort of cover did you have on if it got lost in the post? Well, on my one? Yeah, yeah. Well, we FedExed it and it was it cost us. Uh, so it's like next day flown over to Poland or whatever. It cost like a hundred pounds. It was crazy. But it could still um, go missing. I mean, it's quite a small thing. It could go yeah, down the radio. Yeah. To none with that, I think. And it was it was fully insured. Um, it's fully insured. But going back to that, I I didn't expect it to go in, international. Well, there was a high chance actually it was going to go internationally because I'd promoted it on every forum in the world and gaming. I messaged every gaming YouTuber and all of this. I spent a few days promoting the, the listing. But I thought maybe it's going to go in the UK, and I was going to just drive it to wherever it was yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. You, and then he then went to Poland. You're like, oh, yeah. Well, people were saying to me, take a trip out there for the day, yeah. you know, yeah. easy to get uh, over it's to a Poland. Cheap flight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a cheap flight. Would have been a nice day out for five grand. <laughs> <laughs> I was exactly the same with the CB that I sold for 350. It, it was global shipping. I was kind of like, well, I'm glad it's global shipping because it's only got to get to where is it? It's you know, Gloucestershire, isn't it? Or w WS13, wherever that is. But it's, it was Hermes to the GSP distribution centre. And, you know, when you hand it over to Hermes, you're like, there's no point insuring it with Hermes because, you know, you, you're never going to be able to claim anyway. They cover some stuff. There's a yeah. long list they don't, but they do cover some I stuff. Think, actually, I think I'm not sure they do cover. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, I mean... I'll just, be honest with you, I, I wouldn't... Anything, anything 100 beyond, I'm going UPS. Uh, Hermes yeah. not touching the an expensive item well, they don't even cover cameras now do they no no camera equipment nothing it's, it's yeah crazy but we do use them for our everyday stuff but we we post the majority of our stuff with permies and 99 percent of the stuff is fine oh quite a few people do i mean i'm surprised mm. at that because I, I tend to do for for small parcel and below i'll always go royal mail Mm -hmm. uh, it's only if it's a larger or over two kilogram item that i'll go hermes but when it does get sort of over a hundred pound you're like yeah, yeah. you pay well, the pound or two more <laughs> I've, i found that ups if you're talking that kind of heavier bulkier stuff ups or parcel force it's not a great deal more and i just feel they have a little bit more care i, I may be wrong but i feel like they actually care yeah. a little bit more particularly ups i've never had a problem with ups yeah um, so i tend to if there's some value in it, I just feel a bit better about paying a couple of quid more and going with him. 
Well, with with UPS, you get they've got the nice overall on. You see, like, <laughs> like they have a uniform. Let alone overall, there's a uniform. <laughs> the, the iconic man, you know, it just seems yeah, it's like a nice man. It's a nice professional, you know, instead of just a bloke in his Adidas joggers. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You, you get those video clips of the guys chucking the parcels in the back of the Hermes van, and I've never seen that with a UPS van. You never yeah. seen exactly. I yes, actually came right. into a shop that I dropped a Hermes parcel off the day before. I'd come in the same shop the next day to drop more off. The guy walked past me with my parcel and dropped it. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like good start. That's a good start. <laughs> What's been your sort of biggest sale, John? Have you had uh, sort of? Uh, I know you've had those England shirts recently, which I think I don't, don't think you've sold them yet, but they will go for good money. But we'll... No, I've not managed to get them up yet because I'm still doing the ceiling in the shed, so it's all at a standstill. But I think in recent history, I, I, I did sell the Box Ten Sixty Four a couple of years ago, but I had these uh, Converse Lakers Converse Magic Johnson. Uh, they were six pound from a charity shop. I got like one sixty for those. But that's just after uh, Kobe Bryant passed away, so everything without purple and yellow colours. Really, really, bad really really yeah, it was bad timing, but um, just quite rare sneakers to be honest. But yeah, yeah. Fox N64, nothing thousand or five thousand at the moment. Yeah, um, Fun Neil Funky UK is just asking a question about all of this that we were talking about. He says, uh, domestic shipping to GSP center on high value items, do you pay extra for tracked or signed or insured? Um, so I, I guess the answer is if it is a higher value i probably am inclined not to send it hermes and i might send it via another courier and that will be tracked i i don't tend to pay for any more insurance to be honest i uh, don't tend to sometimes i get scared and i add it but most of the time i think you're just you yeah. just throw that money away i mean i mean i kind of think you know sometimes it, it, it could go wrong and you could lose i mean the biggest amount i've ever lost is um i mentioned this to nick earlier i, I sent a uh, a tv video combo and it was a 150 pound sale and it arrived smashed and um and it it was down would, they, would they have even covered that i doubt they would they wouldn't have covered it and <laughs> the best thing to sort of do with that is just carry on selling the next one uh, here's the thing and i remember here doing a video about this and i i was on the same page as him um is if you if you pay for the insurance on everything for a year, add that up. Exactly. You might as well just lose a package or two or have something yeah. smashed because it'll be a lot cheaper than adding insurance on, I don't know, a thousand packages. I mean, it's, it's difficult to say how much that extra insurance is, but I guess on a hundred pound item and it's big, I mean, the, the postage might be sort of 10 to 12 and you might be paying another sort of seven or eight for the insurance. If, yeah, if you're insuring it to a value of a hundred pounds, I mean, it's just off the top of my head, but you know, so you're right. Once once you've done ten of those, you've practically paid for it. And yeah, exactly. um, how, how many realistically got get lost? It's not one in ten. It's probably you know one well, in hundred. I know George. George sells a lot of big items, big bulky TVs and stuff. I'm not sure. Does he cover his postage? Because he's always selling stuff like that, and that that'd be interesting to ask him that. Yeah, I mean, he does those big sort of like reel to reel machines, and Derek does sort of yeah. like a similar thing. Um, and I think they'd be over the sort of UPS and um, Heavy, yeah. size limit. So, yeah, I don't know about that, but yeah, that's what's the biggest thing you've ever sent? Hmm. I've sent the Sylvanian family's house, same, uh, that's, that's the biggest, the big yeah. region to um, mine got smashed. Mine went to GSP, got smashed, and I had all the money back. Yeah, mine mine was GSP, and the woman. Um, mine, was, mine was France as well. Yeah, France. I always go to France. I think they're all over there. All the Regency <laughs> hotels are in a big line. In <laughs> <laughs> a little village. It's actually a village going. <laughs> it's a little village with all these like. Imagine if it turned out they were all to the same person. That's got a big house for. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was an interesting one to wrap. We, ours was a life-size flammable figure. You know, in a shop display once, a life-size mm. one. That was it, was, it wasn't heavy. It was really lightweight, but, like, it was just massive, obviously. Um, but, dead body. Yeah, it looked like a dead body by the end of it. But, <laughs> it was in a box. But, no, it's, it's, we, we don't shy away from a big stuff. I don't mind trying to package it. Um, you, you know, it, it opens it up, you know, not just collection only or, or, or 
I've seen um, I've seen one of those massive Lego Ninjago ones on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. I think they wanted three grand for it. Wow. But it's how big it is. It's like pretty much Lego store size, Lego land or whatever. Really, really big. But yeah, that would be heavy. That'd be, that'd be a crazy process. heavy. Yeah, pick up. Nuts. I had to Frankenbox an acoustic guitar about a month back. And it and it looked hilarious. It looked like a Lego guitar. It's a giant square bit with a big bit sticking out. Look at that picture on Instagram of me. Yeah. On the yeah. Didn't, you, didn't you do a pair of skis, Nick? And it was just like right on the limit of like within a centimeter of one of the postage. Yeah. I still remember you doing that. Yeah, I remember. And oh, I also did a um, a majorette mace. It was like I don't know, a meter and a half long um i can't remember i struggled to find someone that would chip it for me but i found somebody in the end i think that might be on ups but it, it was just one long massive pole and there was no way it didn't come apart you know i bought my first guitar hero I, i've never bought guitar hero guitars for some strange reason but i picked one up this morning for a pound and i was like i know these like come apart i don't know well, not all of them do but yeah most of them you can take the, the neck off but i got that for a pound um, right, I don't know if I've missed any questions. If I have missed any, let me know. Um, we mentioned about Facebook Marketplace earlier. Do you, do you sell, Jack, Emily, do you sell on Amazon at all? or do you sort of... Not yet. No, we want to look into it. Definitely look into it. Because the idea of pass passive income, I love a bit of passive income, but I'm, I'm, I would like a bit of that. You know, I know you do a bit of work for it to begin with, obviously, but FBA, ship it off. Oh, I mean, that's got my name all over it. <laughs> well, I remember when I first got into sort of like, you're checking it out i thought oh this will be brilliant i'll just stay at home and look at all the get all the deals on the internet and i can order everything to my house and then i'll just simply send it off and i'll make loads of money but it's not easy it's yeah, not I easy. I, 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 um, yeah i can imagine it's not as as, as you know it sounds it sounds <laughs> Describing yeah. sounds idyllic. That's yeah, not yeah. my experience. Is, everybody wants to do that, don't they? Everybody yeah, thinks, yeah. Everybody's after the same deal. I mean, I I think my Amazon now probably has you know less than twenty things up there. I will put more. I, I tend to look at it more quarter four. So sort of like come August September, I send. I would say if you've got board games that you sourced or yeah or any sort of stuff like that any any new and sealed stuff that you've managed to get from boot fairs or charity shops that's a good time to sort of try it out and it's good to know the process i'm i'm glad i know the process but you know i haven't really focused on it at all and i know some people do some people don't i don't know I don't if it's at all with amazon i'd love to get into it but it just seems i need to get the house in order first get the ebay right yeah. Do what you do what you're good at, and then kind of move right. on to that. I know a lot of people sell secondhand books on there and make a killing. Yeah, no, um, so yeah, maybe something in the future for sure. I'd love to do that. I, I think if you can, if you are able to source cheaply and in and in bulk. So if you you've got a contact who can just get you lots of like very low value or cheap books, then then you're laughing because you can just go through them and chuck stuff up there. But if, yeah. if like me, you go into your local charity shop and books are at least sort of two quid. There's no way you're going to be able to do it. So it's, it does depend on your situation totally. Yeah. I think second we, we thought... Sorry, go on. Nick. I was going to say secondhand on Amazon is great. Um, it really is if you if you can get into it. Uh, we do a bit of both, obviously. But, I mean, I've, I've really fallen out of love with Amazon, I'll be honest. And and this Q4 is going to be a make or break. I, I'm, I'm at the point now I could walk away happily from Amazon. <laughs> They, they are the worst for moving the goalposts. You know, you get all set up and comfortable doing a thing, and then they say, oh, no, you can't do that thing anymore. Or, oh, Nick, you can't do media on Amazon, which is most of your money all of a sudden. Why? Oh, because we've decided you can't. Oh, it drives me nuts. So be prepared to be annoyed with Amazon yeah. or not if you get involved. <laughs> well, I imagine you, 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 you've cashed in over the years, so you're happy to cash out now. You know what I mean? Sort of, it, it, there's other we're, options. Maybe, well, I don't know, but... We'd be fine right. without them. It's just frustrating yeah, yeah. You know, we've we've done very well on Amazon for many years, and it you know it's just annoying. They're so I think, annoying. <laughs> I think we feel comfortable with eBay. We we <laughs> shift a fair bit of gear, and we are we we know the ins and outs of for what we do. We're happy where we are. Um, so it's almost like a, a new thing. You you know, is that like you get comfortable and you do oh do I want to try that? You know, that new thing. But I think we'll, we'll 
dip our feet in the water and, and see. Yeah, the good thing <laughs> is you could get you could just get a box and just send that. I, I do it per item now. I did sign up for like the thirty pound a month thing or whatever it was, but I I put my level down. And if you just get a box and you know fill it full of like six board games and some other little bits and bobs. And send that up and see how it goes, just to just well, to go through the process. You know. Yeah, or or dabble in Merchant Fulfilled, which which is a lot less hassle in many ways, apart from the fact you have to ship it. Um, I mean, it may be that we just go back to doing Merchant Fulfilled, which is how we started on Amazon back in ninety nine or whenever it was two thousand, and um, and just knock the FBA on the head. I don't know. It, we'll see. Ask ask me in January how I feel about. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a few different options out there, you know, much more than there were sort of five years ago. Do you, do you use Depop or anything like that? I use Depop, yeah. I'm not sure about Jack and Emily, but I do quite we well do. on Depop. It's a different audience. I think with it's quite it's like ranging from like 17 to 24 or something like that. I know I it's a younger market. market. Yeah, yeah, I know Nick, your daughter's I, been selling on Depop. I know it's kind of a younger audience. It's like like streetwear and handmade stuff like that yeah, yeah unsurprisingly it, 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 i've not sold on it so. <laughs> we used to have clothes and trainers that yeah. and bags on there before um, we went away that we I, we both used to have jobs but yeah. charity shops were a lot obviously cheaper back then and yeah, it was I charity shops just one <laughs> so it was easier to get sort of cool stuff yeah. to put on there i think so. they've got the, the the quirkier sort of um rare not rare trainers but sort of you know yeah quirky trainers cool. not go. Sort of I think there's a lot of people that use Depop that just don't use eBay at all. So I think it's like a con entirely different audience in some regards. Yeah. Like there'll be a lot of people that just are looking for clothes on Depop and they won't even look on eBay. They won't search it at all. They won't even have the app. And I just think it's just an extra little thing on the side uh, for sure. Yeah, you're right. It's a different audience. Mm. Right. We've got about 10 minutes left, I think. So it's probably got time for two more quick questions. Um, Husty, Husty's Emporium says, uh, as as YouTuber guys, do you find it gets you lots more sales online? Um, very quickly for me, <laughs> I don't think I've ever sold anything online. In actual fact, I've had people contact me trying to sell me stuff. So <laughs> it's kind of like counterintuitive. We get a lot of that as well. Yeah, um, Nick, I know you've had, um, obviously, you get some direct sales, which is fabulous. Yeah, I mean, YouTube for us was never about promoting our our ebay and for the vast majority of time we've been on youtube we never even shared our ebay thousands of people found that we have like five thousand followers on ebay it's something ridiculous so we realized after a while it's pointless not sharing our ebay so we made the decision to share it and 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 openly say if you see anything drop me a message and, and we'll do a deal and for example last two days youtube has outsold ebay for us Wow. Um, it's become a significant part of our business and that's just from people seeing something they want and happy to buy it from us direct so it cuts out listing it cuts out most of the fees um it's great class were you ever concerned of like trolls and stuff sharing your email account is that why you didn't um it wasn't why we didn't initially initially i just didn't want the channel to to seem to be promoting our business i wanted the channel to be what it still is which is just sharing what we do and hopefully inspiring people if we can um but yeah at one point i was worried that what if people find our ebay and want to stitch me up but that's just paranoid I think. it's strange that <laughs> yeah I, i've i've had someone ask me what's my ebay store and i'm kind of quite hesitant to, to sort of go oh it's this and it's that is silly because anyone could find it easily yeah. by looking at you know yeah. for the items that's, that's, the, yeah. that's the point yeah. if somebody for whatever reason is determined to to wind you up they'll do it anyway uh and 99 percent of people just want to support you and buy from your store because they enjoy yeah. what you do it's as simple as that exactly um have you sold anything sort of direct? well i suppose you've only been on youtube for a little a little while haven't you jack and emily so, so. yeah it's been, we've a month. been a month yeah we've been here a month so um we haven't yeah, sold uh, i'm surprised we've got any subscribers to sell to so well, you never know it might happen tonight you know, Who knows? You know. Are you, John Luke? have you had any offers on those football shirts nothing on the football shirts i've cut oh, sold a couple it. of bits and bobs uh to subscribers and i've had i've had people ask about items i just never got around to getting them photoed yet i've got such a big backlog because i've not uh, been doing the shed i've just not got the space to work in at the minute but yeah there's a couple of items that i've gone to subscribers which is cool and it just adds it a little bit you know people want to give back to you as well uh, as yeah. well as watching 
yeah, it's yeah. Nice. and it's also people do want to support the channel and, and give to somebody that they've watched and also if it's an item that they were thinking about buying anyway they're more than happy to buy from somebody who's very open and honest and, and they feel they can trust and i'm the same you know i've bought from friends that are youtubers and stuff because you know you're not going to get stitched up and you're going to get what you bought right yes. has, has anyone ever questioned like you've said oh we paid a pound for this I'm, i've got it up for 40 and a youtuber's like yeah but you only paid a pound even though like but that's yeah you know, you've got to make your money your profits your profit obviously no uh like I said, um, we sold loads of the CDs that we showed in that hall, and I kept banging on. I was so pleased. They were only 20p each, only 20p each. And people were like, yeah, just name your price. And some some of the stuff that people have bought that I shipped out today was was the rarer, higher-end stuff. And I'm like, this goes for about 20 quid. You can have it for 15, knowing that I've already told them I, I paid 50p, and they were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, if it's the good thing is the audience, I think, un understands because they wouldn't be watching you if they didn't understand the whole concept of research. Yeah. And it, yeah. if you that's want it, business, yeah. yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, and that's it. And they know I run a business, so if I can get twenty, you know, I'm not going to do it for much less than fifteen. I don't want to give away money. <laughs> I think the majority of viewers, the majority of viewers, are either resellers or they're looking to do it, or they just really like you anyway. So they're never going to be like that type of person to say that anyway. Cool. Yeah. Right, last one from uh, Jay Doherty says, uh, does anyone have any funny fail stories? <laughs> so in, in, I was thinking about buying fails, and a lot of my buying fails are normally retail arbitrage, where I go into Sainsbury's and go, oh, they've got some Lego for 30% off. I'll make loads of money on Amazon, and then I end up selling it for less than I bought it for. But we won't talk about those. But um, I suppose the... the one most recently is I bought 90, and it might not actually end up being a fail because I think I'll still make money on it, but I bought 90 milk bottles. No, hang on. How many was it? 40, 40 milk bottles or 45 milk bottles for about 90 quid. And I, I got off them as well. I think someone spoke to me about those milk bottles as well. Yeah, Chris um, Cookie and the Hayden saw a load of milk bottles on his latest um, car boot, and he went back and filmed them because I'd, I'd picked up a load. And I... I bought it because the bloke said, oh, I want a fiver each from them, but if you buy the whole lot, you can have them for a hundred or something. And then I got him down to 90, and I thought, oh, it's bound to be worth it. They, they probably are worth about a fiver each, um, but it's just I've got all these bloody milk bottles stuck in, you stuck around the house, and I had to clean them all and sort them all out. So that would be my sort of latest fail, um, apart from clothes, which I'm not too good at anyway, but um john have you got any sort of like big fails that you've had or it's always with re uh, retail arbitrage i think it, obviously i pick up some really good stuff from ra and then obviously you get some hit and miss as well uh it's never always dead rosy you know what, what you get from the shops but nothing like too out there has ever paid up really a load of money and it's not going to return um i never really spend like a ton on it i've not really spent a few hundred on a haul really they don't take many risks it's probably should do Cool. What about you, Jack and Emily? Have you got any? Uh... Most recent yeah. one. We put our auction video up, but yeah, as Mark just said in the comments, we bought a bit of driftwood. It wasn't meant to be driftwood <laughs> or, or firewood. <laughs> it's just a knife sharpener. Yeah, yeah. I'll need. I'll make <laughs> pigs ear of it. Yeah. I mean, I genuinely, when walking around the auction, didn't look at it. Didn't even notice it. Didn't even see it was there. Didn't pick it up. Didn't do nothing. Then uh, Emma's gone back to the van. She didn't even know I was bidding on it. It came up. I thought, I'll quit those on eBay. Minimum I could find, cheapest I could find was 70 quid, up to three or 400. I thought I'd give, I'll pay 20 quid for it, have a go. Suddenly paid 45 plus commission. <laughs> don't know where that went. And then went and picked it up and it fell apart in my hands as I picked it up. <laughs> it's literally, I was like, what a rookie mistake. Um, it's funny, isn't it? It's funny, it's funny yeah. when you look up prices sometimes, you can be in a shop and look up a price of something and you think, oh yeah, yeah, it, it gets a lot of money, and, and then you can get home and look up exactly the same thing. And you're like, "Where's it gone? Where's that?" Thing? Yeah, you get a load of results for like less than what you paid. Like, what? What's wrong with eBay? Actually, eBay is sending you like different, higher priced information when you're in the shop. They know you're in the shop, definitely. Yeah. There you go. What about Some... you, Nick? Have you had a uh, sort of big fails or? Um, yeah, th there must be so many over the years. The one one that sticks in mind that I'm not sure I've shared before is another RA thing. Um, I bought loads of candles. They were big, uh, 
Four candles. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how many it was. It's quite a few of these uh, big Christmas candles with Christmas. Yeah. Uh, it was a Tesco's like clearing. So they were dirt cheap. And I put them away for Christmas. So I put them in the loft. And this was a year when we had like crazy hot summer. And our loft gets oh, no. literally, literally hot. <laughs> Oh. We go went up there nearer Christmas, and these candles that stood nice and proud, like. Just, oh. <laughs> Imagine if it, if it start coming down through the loft hatch, like. <laughs> yeah. it red as well, be like blood through the ceiling. Yeah. So we, we, <laughs> they were still usable though, luckily. So Andrea likes her candles, so we just use them. But yeah, that was a fail. Was that a lot of money you spent on that, or was it? All no, they were cheap. I don't know. 20 quid or something it wasn't a big loss it was just funny it was just ridiculous brilliant. Brilliant. right well i know john's got another um stream in about five minutes so i think we're going to end there thanks ever so much for coming in you're on with masterpieces aren't you yeah um, is it on his channel or your channel on my channel yeah on your channel uh, i know peter ray is going live this evening as well so lots of options for things to watch um, we'll probably do another one of these in a couple of weeks. Um, I've just seen David Emma super chatted. Ooh. Thanks, David. That is, Ooh. God, I think I need a bit of a lie down after that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. It always throws me the super chats. Um, but thank you ever so much. I don't know whether I'm, Nick, you know about this. Am I supposed to stay on now while that super chat? Like, no, so he gets his money. <laughs> I don't really have to. Perhaps if you all leave, I'll just stay on. I like it that comes on the screen, and that, that's a cool thing to do. Okay, but David, thanks ever so much. Do check out David's channel. Uh, he's fantastic. Um, I've seen oh, him. Sort David of M. Oh, good to see you, David. David I can't yeah, see lo that. Lovely guy. Do sub to him. He's fantastic. Um, thanks ever so much for everyone in the chat who's come and joined if you do want to appear on this let me know like i say normally plan them every two weeks um once a week would be a bit too much i think um but for now thank you nick thanks for coming along pleasure thanks for inviting me thanks john no worries pleasure again and cheers jack and emily thanks so cheers much. for having us we appreciate it take care see you all soon cheers guys see you later all right guys